When you have an understanding of the relative dating techniques, then it's time to apply that information, that knowledge. And the best place to do that is somewhere like the Grand Canyon. So in the Grand Canyon, you have uh, the Kaibab Plateau is at the top of the canyon. My dog wants outside. Hold on. The top of the canyon is the plateau <clears throat> and Colorado River snakes through the inner canyon here. So this is, white line here is the white um, correlates with this line here. The edge of the rock units are exposed as cliffs. Some are more like um, erosional surfaces, but there's a lot of cliffs in the canyon as well. So here is the names of the units, the Kaibab here at the top is makes up that plateau, <clears throat> is a limestone. And then the inner canyon down here is uh, made up of igneous and metamorphic rocks. The Zoroaster granite cuts through the Vishnu schist. There are also some units that are tilted, the Unkar group, and then there's a big unconformity, angular unconformity on the top of those between the, and then a Nonconformity between the Zoroaster granite, the Vishnu, and the Tapetes. Okay, so big unconformity, igneous and metamorphic rocks in the bottom of the canyon, some tilted old, old, old sediments, and then the flat lying Tapetes on top of that. The geology of the Grand Canyon in an area like that where you have exposed beds, it's pretty easy to figure out the stratigraphy. So you have what's called a stratigraphic column. So here is a stratigraphic column with lots of um, sedimentary beds in it. Over here on the right is um, the same units, but in the Grand Canyon. On the left are those units in Vegas. So we can follow those. Remember the um, lateral continuity that they, they, the big ocean basin flooded that area. So <clears throat> the rocks of northern Arizona and the Grand Canyon are going to be the same as the rocks in Nevada. Ooh, can we see it on this map? Let's try. Here we go. <laughs> northern Arizona and the Colorado River in Nevada over here in Vegas. So those you can go across that much area and connect the units. Sorry, it's probably really hard to see, but there it is. So what they've done here on the bottom right is trying to draw what that looked like. So the Grand Canyon sediments are these over here that were being deposited on the edge, like the continental shelf of the ocean basin. And then when you got over to the Las Vegas area, it was a deeper basin with more sediments coming in and, and um, piling up in that basin. Either way, they can correlate them. They know that the supai is the supai, the red wall is the red wall. And because um, if you map it over that big area, turn me off, that is the, um, those are called formations. So, the Supai and the Red Wall, the Temple Butte, and the Moave and the Bright Angel, those rock units can cover a big area, and we call them formations. The, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where one touches another is called a contact. So sometimes you have unconformable contacts, unconformities, and sometimes you just have depositional contacts, like between the Bright Angel and the Moave where you just have a sandstone that grades into a, a shaley clay unit of the Moabi. Okay. <clears throat> Here are some units that are correlated in a similar basin. So here's the more of the shelf. Uh, B is out on like the rise or, and, or the slope. And then A is more like the rise or out into the abyss of this basin and so we have relatively thin units near the shoreline and then it goes deeper out here and then uh, thicker units out here to the west.
Yeah, similar to what we saw in the Green Canyon. Oh, and unconformities. Unconformities are um, usually shown by designated by these squiggly lines. So um, here are the metamorphic rocks with the squiggly lines on top. So what kind of unconformity would that represent? I'll give you a second. Angular, this conformity or non-conformity? Right, a non-conformity. <laughs> okay. All right, those <clears throat> geologic units can be put on a map, and we call that a geologic map. So geologic map, uh, William Smith in the late 1700s was in England, and he realized that rock units could be matched across counties or areas of southern England. Then he took that knowledge and was able to see that he could map units across all of England, and he made the first geologic map. So he also noticed the stratigraphy, that those are a normal order of rocks, and uh, he found fossils in certain layers and found them in other places. So he came up with the first geologic map. And um, it was a, it's fairly simple geology. It's mostly um, anticlines and synclines, folded rocks. And then on top of that, that would be an angular unconformity with those overlying sediments. <clears throat> so the map looked like this. Here is the map. I have a link in the PowerPoint that takes you to a book. So there was a book written, a really great book about the map that changed the world in the life and times um, during that time. So I won't uh, ruin the book for you. So read it and see what you think. <laughs> All right, so geologic maps have gotten more complicated and fancy over time. Um, this one is done digitally. So the, this was done with like pigments colored pencils, who knows how he created that, maybe some different, I don't know, however you make colors in the 1700s. These days, though, it's uh, oftentimes done in the field with colored pencils, then we bring that into our offices, and we make digital maps. So here is a digital map of an area, and the side view here is called the cross-sectional view. So we can take what we understand from the surface and uh, project what the geology might be at the subsurface. Here on the right is a geologic map of California, also done digitally. And this one has on it as well the faults. So the fault trace of the San Andreas Fault Zone. Down here's the Salton Sea and the different rock units. On a geologic map, you're gonna find a legend like this and the oldest units are going to be on the bottom of the legend. So here's some old Paleozoic, uh, Precambrian, Paleozoic, and Mesozoic, metamorphic and sedimentary rocks, and those go up into younger tertiary and then to the quaternary sediments. Quaternary sediments pretty much means like today, sediments being deposited today. <clears throat>